In this session, we're going to do indefinite integrals. Some people also call these antiderivatives. And in some sense, it's like taking the opposite of a derivative. So it depends upon you knowing your derivative rules uh, very well. OK? So um, there's just a one issue first. Um, and this is the question that, supposing two functions have the same derivative, uh, how different can they be? So for example, um, some function has a derivative cos of x. And there's another function which has a derivative cos of x. We know that they don't have to be the same function, right? So uh, derivative of sine of x plus 7 is cos of x and the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. So uh, two different functions can have the same derivative. So how different can they be? OK. So uh, the mean value theorem helps us out with that. So we had this result from the mean value theorem. If f is continuous on closed AB, and differentiable on open AB, and the derivative at x is equal to zero for all x in AB, then f is constant on the interval A to B. Okay, so we have that. So now, if we say you have two functions, f and g, which are continuous on AB and they're differentiable on open AB, and the derivative at x is equal to the derivative of g, then at most they d differ by a constant. And what you do is you let, uh, you consider a new function, h of x, which is equal to f minus g, and then its derivative is going to be zero. So then you use the result that functions which have zero derivative on an interval are constant on that interval, okay? So if two functions have the same derivative, then they can differ at most by a constant. So if a function has a derivative cos of x, so we know that sine of x, for example, has the derivative cos of x, then sine of x plus a constant has the same derivative, and you, you don't have to worry about any other functions possibly having the same derivative uh, as sine of x plus a constant, okay? So we use that we're going to need that result. Um, now we go on to indefinite integrals. Okay, so here's a notation that's used. <coughs> Capital F of x, so some function of x, is equal to, and this is read as integral of f of x dx. Now that elongated s over there stands for sum. Um, we'll... Uh, We'll see why that's the case later. Right now, it's just a notation. So you read that as the integral of f of x dx, OK? And f should be the function th such that its derivative is equal to small f of x. So f of x is equal to the integral of f of x dx means what function, when I take its derivative, gives me small f of x, okay? That's, that's what this notation means. Okay, so let's start with a few simple functions. We know that the derivative with respect to x of a constant function is equal to zero. So what that means is that the integral of zero dx is equal to c, right? Integral zero dx is asking the question, what function, when I take its derivative, gives me zero? And we had the result that the functions which are uh, zero on an interval are the, wh whose derivative is zero on the interval, sorry, are the constant functions. So this capital C means some constant function now, the derivative of all constant functions is zero, so c actually stands for 
all of the constant functions at the same time. So it's, it's really a representation of infinitely many constant functions. Okay. Uh, are there any questions so far? Okay. Let's try another one. The integral of one. Okay. Now, I know, so the derivative with respect to x of x is equal to one. So if I ask what's the integral of one dx or the antiderivative of one, you will say, well, um, I know that when I take the derivative of x, I get one. So the, the antiderivative is equal to x. But if I added a constant to it, nothing would change. Its derivative would still be one. So the correct answer is that the integral of one dx is equal to x plus c, where c stands for some arbitrary constant. Okay. Uh, so really what we're going to do is we're going to run these uh, derivative rules that we've found so far backwards, and those will be giving us rules for integration. Okay, so remember that for rational powers, um, I had this rule that um, the derivative of x to the r is r to x to the r minus one. Okay, so if I take the derivative with respect to x of x to the r plus one divided by r plus one, I will get x to the r. Okay. R is a rational power. We haven't considered real powers yet, but R is some rational power. Okay, so that means that if I run this rule backwards, that's integral of x to the R dx. Well, what function when I took its derivative gave me x to the R? Well, x to the R plus one divided by R plus one. And if I add a constant to that, that doesn't take change the derivative, right? I still get the derivative of x to the R. So the full answer is x to the r plus 1 divided by r plus 1 plus c, which c stands for an arbitrary constant. Uh, sir, what, uh, what is constant here? C is a constant, right? So if I look at the term on the right-hand side, if I, take, if I take the derivative, I will get x to the r plus the derivative of c is 0. Okay, so C, C is any arbitrary constant. Okay, well, and one thing we need to take care of is obviously R is not equal to minus one. Okay, because if R is equal to minus one, that expression on the left doesn't make any sense, right? Or the, the answer on the right doesn't make any sense. You'd be dividing by it zero. Okay. So this is the rule for x to the r, provided that r is not equal to minus one. Any rational number except r cannot be equal to minus one. Okay. We'll deal with the minus one case a little bit later. Okay. Okay, you will recall that the derivative with respect to x of sine of x was equal to cos of x. So now can you give me an integration rule? If you run this rule backwards, what integration rule do you get? Uh, integral of cos of x equals sine of x. Integral of cos of x plus c I think. Uh, yeah. Integral. Yeah. Sin minus sine of x new. No. We know that the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is equals cos of x. When I say what is the integral of cos of x dx, that means what function, when I take its derivative, gives me cosine of x. So the antiderivative of cos of x is equal to sine of x plus c. Okay, indefinite integrals, you always end up with a plus C, okay? Let's try the next one. 
I know that the derivative with respect to x of cos of x is equal to minus sine of x. That was the differentiation rule. Now you give me the rule for integration. Integral of sine of x is equal to cos of x plus c, mm. minus cos of x plus c. Okay, integral mm. of, all right, integral of minus sine of x dx is equal to cos of x plus c. Okay. Okay, so you remember we took derivatives of some trigonometric functions, right? So the derivative of what function gave me secant squared of x? Tan x, tan of x. Yeah, the derivative of tangent of x gave me secant squared of x. So the integral of secant squared of x is equal to what? Tan of x. Tan of x. Tan of x plus c. Plus c. Plus c. Oh. Anytime you do an indefinite integral like we're doing here, you will always write plus c, okay? So the integral of secant squared of x dx is equal to tan of x plus c. Okay, what function when I took its derivative gave me secant of x tangent of x? Secant of x. Secant of x. Right, so secant. the integral of secant of x tangent of x dx is equal to what? Secant of x plus c. Secant of x plus c. Okay. Uh, derivative of what function gave me cosecant of x cotangent of x? Do you remember? Cosecant of x. Cosecant of x, yeah. Okay, so we get another rule for that. Okay. Derivative of what function gave me one over the root of one minus x squared? Sine inverse of x. Sine inverse x. Sine, sine inverse. So the integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared dx is equal to what? A sine inverse of x plus c. Sine inverse of x plus c. Okay. The integral of minus 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared <laughs> dx is what? Cos inverse Cos of inverse. x plus c. Cos inverse of x plus c. Plus c, yeah. yeah. Okay. One over the absolute value of x root of x squared minus one. What function when I took its derivative gave me that? Um, secant inverse plus. Se secant inverse. Yeah. Okay. So you can, right? If if you can remember yeah. your differentiation rules, then you can. Work out the integrals. Okay. Derivative of what function gave me 1 over 1 plus x squared? Tan inverse plus c. Tangent inverse. Right. So the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx will be tan inverse of x plus c. Okay. So a few simple uh, integration rules. Uh, now, uh, remember you had linearity of derivatives, right? The derivative of the sum was the sum of the derivatives, right? So uh, the, there's a linearity rule in, um, for integration, uh, which is basically the derivative rule run backwards. So once again, if I had the derivative with respect to x of alpha f plus beta g, that was equal to alpha derivative of f plus beta times the derivative of g. Okay. So if I if I'm running things backwards, I I integrate that expression. Then that means that I can pull the alpha out of the integration sign, and I can integrate f prime to get f. I can pull. The, I can break the sum up into pieces, and then I can pull the constants outside of the integration. Uh, sir, alpha is a constant over here, right? Uh, alpha and beta. Here, c is a constant. F is a f and g are functions. And sir, what's uh, the alpha and the beta? Yeah, alpha and beta are constants. Yes. Yes, yeah, sir. That means. Right. So, you can break the sum up into two pieces. You can evaluate the integral of alpha f prime 
plus the integral of beta g prime. And you can pull the alpha outside of the integration sign, and you can pull the beta outside of the integration sign. And then you would get this result. And remember, you always end up with a plus C. Okay, so let's see an example of this, right? Integral of three secant squared of X plus five cos of X dx. Okay, give you a second to think about that. Right, so you can pull the three outside you don't, right, so you can break it up into two pieces. You can take the integral of the first function plus the integral of the second function. And within the integra the individual integrals, you can pull the three outside of the integration sign, you can pull the five outside of the integration sign if that would help you. Okay, so what do you think this integral is? Three ten of x. Three ten of x. Your next. Yeah. Right, so three, times tangent of x would give me three secant squared x plus five times the sine of x would give me five times the cosine of x when I take the derivative and then plus c. Okay. All right. So those were a few simple integrals. And now we, um, we, we go on to, a, uh, so, this is an illustration of how you would use linearity to do the problem. Okay. Break the integral up into something simpler. Uh, now we, we come to a technique called substitution. And um, oh. and what we, uh, what we do here is we remember the chain rule. So substitution is based upon running the chain rule backwards. Okay. So once again, the chain rule, if I want the derivative of G of F of X, I take the derivative of G with respect to F of X, and then I multiply it by the derivative of F with respect to X. Okay. So that's the chain rule. Now, how do we use, if we run the rule backwards, what that means is if I integrate both sides, the integral of something that looks like this, the derivative of G of a function times the derivative of that function DX, that will be equal to G of F of X plus C. Okay. So substitution, what you, you use substitution when you look at the integrand, the thing between the integral sign and the dx is called the integrand. So you look at the integrand and you say, that looks like something that came from the chain rule for some particular function. And, um, you know, the, 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 that, that motivates the substitution. Okay. Um, so, this is the form that you're looking for. An integral that looks like this. Some constant, constant multiples don't really matter, okay? And you see if you've got an f of u and you've got the derivative of u in the integrand. <clears throat> then integration uh, by substitution might work, okay? So let's, let's take a look at an example. I is equal to five X to the fourth times the cosine of X to the five plus three DX. Okay, that's not, that does not look immediately like the derivative of some function that we already know, right? <clears throat> so now we say, well, maybe, maybe I can use the, maybe I can use substitution so you look inside here and you say, do I see a, does this look like some cosine of u times the derivative of u? Okay, so you've got cosine of something complicated and then you've got that derivative of that thing. You've got cosine of a polynomial 
And then you have the derivative of that polynomial sitting outside. So substitution would suggest that you should try, um, try letting, try doing a substitution for the polynomial. Okay. So once again, I've got inside the cosine function, I've got x to the five plus three. And outside of that, I've got the differential of x to the five plus three. I've got five to five x to the fourth dx. Okay. So it's the cosine of something times the derivative of something. And that sounds, that sounds like the chain rule is going on here. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that I'm going to let u equal x to the five plus three. And then what's outside of the cosine is just u prime of x dx. So that's du outside. Okay. So we're going to, this is what we do. We let u equal x to the five plus three, and then we take its differential du is equal to five x to the four dx. Okay. So then what happens with the integral? Well, okay, so I let i was equal to the integral of cos of x to the 5 plus 3. I'm letting that be du times 5x to the 4th dx. Okay, yeah, so x to the 5 plus 3 is u, and outside of that I've got du. So now I can write the integral as i is equal to integral cos of u du. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. Now... What's the integral of cosine? Sine. Sine. R right. So I've changed it into something that I know how to do. I is equal to cos of u. Well, so I is equal to integral cos of u du. Now, if you integrate with respect to u, you get sine of u plus c. All right. Now, what was that u? That u was equal to x to the 5 plus 3. Okay, so i is equal to, the integral is equal to sine of x to the 5 plus 3 plus an arbitrary constant. And to check your work, you can take the derivative and see if you get the integrand. So if I take the derivative of sine x to the 5 plus 3 plus c, I would get cos of x to the 5 plus 3 times 5x to the 4th, which is, what, what was, that was the integrand, right? So I can always check the answers by differentiating. Okay. Um, is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Try another example. I is equal to X times the cosine of AX squared plus B DX. Okay. So is that an integrand that we know how to, that particular integrand, do we know how to handle it? Yeah. Yes, sir, through substitution. Yeah, it, it isn't something that we can, it isn't something that we can do right away. Right? We're gonna to have to manipulate this so that we can handle it. Okay, so inside, can, yes. inside the cosine, I've got a polynomial, ax squared plus b. And outside, I've got x dx. Now, what's the derivative of ax squared plus b? 2ax. 2ax. It's 2ax, two two right? 2ax. Right. Yes. Okay. So the, different, the differential would be twice ax dx. So I've almost got that outside. It's just there's a multiplicate. I've got x dx outside. And what I want outside is twice two ice a x dx, but that's all right. Multiplicative constants uh, can be handled, okay? So this is the way we do it. We would, what would we, what would we let u equal? ax squared plus b. u would equal ax squared plus b, and then du would be equal to 
twice two a x, x d x. And we would change this integral into this i would be the integral of some constant times cos of u du. And that, then I'll be able to integrate that. Okay? Uh, so Good. can you repeat the last three steps again? Okay. You would let u equal ax squared plus b. Right? And then you would let then du becomes twice ax dx. Okay? So what you're going to have, this integral, if you write it everything in terms of u and du, this integral becomes the integral of some constant times cos of u du. And you know how to integrate the cosine. Okay? Okay, here's an integral. Integral ax plus b to the 5 dx. Okay, so what is the, uh, what is the differential of ax plus b? It's a. It's just a, right? So if I let, so what am I going to let u equal here? Ax plus b. Ax plus b. So you're going to get, um, again, your your du is a little bit off, but just by a multiplicative constant. So you're going to get the integral of some constant, u to the 5 du, and you know how to integrate that one. Right? Remember, you're, even though you're doing your substitutions, yeah, there's a question. Uh, yes, sir. In this uh, case, I'll be multiplying and dividing by A, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one A will be inside the integration sign and one uh, one over A will be outside and then I'll be using this. Yeah, if you, so, yeah you could do it that way if you want. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> sir, you talked about some constants. Sir, which constant were you talking about? Well, I mean, outside of this, inter if, if I take du, I get A dx, right? Right? But outside of this thing, I've got one dx. Okay? So when you write your integral in terms of, uh, in terms of u, you're, go you're going to have like a factor of one over a or something. That doesn't matter. Right? Okay. I is equal to the integral of one over one plus four x squared dx, right? If it was the integral of one over one plus x squared dx, we'd be fine, right? It would look like inverse tangent, but that's not quite what we have, but, but that's okay. We want to put it in, we want to do a substitution such that it looks like an integral that we know how to handle, okay? So, uh, what would my substitution here be? Uh, sir, firstly, you will divide and, uh, a divide and multiply by 8x, and then you will let one, uh, 1 over 1 plus 4x squared is equal to dx is equal to uh, u, and uh, 1 over 1 plus 4x squared is equal to u, and d a dx. 8x dx is equal to u, and then you will integrate it. Okay. All right. So you can let u equal 2x, right? And then du is equal to twice dx. So this would be the integrand then becomes 1 over 1 plus u squared. If I let u equal 2x, the integrand becomes 1 over 1 plus u squared. That I know how to handle. Now, du would be 2dx, so dx is equal to 1 half du. So when I write everything in terms of u, this will be the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared times 1 half du. Because of linearity, you can pull the 1 half outside of the integral sign. And now the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du, you know how to do. All right, that's the arc tangent of u, 
Uh, sir, sir, we can use the other way also. Yeah, you can do any, anything that works is fine. Okay. 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 I is the integral of x to the 9 times sine of x to the 10 plus 1 dx. Right? Inside the sine, I've got x to the 10 plus 1. Right? Outside the sine, I've got x to the 9 dx. All right. Can this be done by substitution? Yes. And if so, which substitution would you use? Uh, u is equal to x to the power 10 plus 1. Yeah, you let u equal x to the 10 plus 1. And then du equals 10x to the 9. Right? So this integrand is the same as sine of u. And then... Um, du divided by 10. Okay. So that will work also. Okay. How about this one? Sine of 2x plus 1, cos of 2x plus 1 dx. I can think there, there might be several ways of doing it. What do you think? U is equal to cos 2x plus 1. Okay, so that's one way. So one way of doing it would be say that u equals cosine of 2x plus 1, then du equals, uh, let's see, du equals minus sine of 2x plus 1 times 2. You get an extra factor of 2 in there, that's all right. Okay, so that's so one we substitution. Can also, uh, multiply by 2 yeah. and divide by 2. Sir, so what will be the u and the du over here? Well, okay, so you can either let u equal cos of 2x plus 1, and then du is minus sine of 2x plus 1 times 2. Or you could let u equal sine of 2x plus 1, and then du equals cos of 2x plus 1 times 2, right? So if you did that substitution, it would be integral of u du divided by two, okay? If you did the both ways, it would be the same now. Yeah, both ways. The final answer you, may look different, but it'll be- it, the, U into DU divided by two. They would, they would only differ by a constant, right? So the, the, I, I can see two possible substitutions. Sir, so over here, if we take U equals cos of 2x plus 1, then du becomes uh, minus 2 sine 2x plus 1 times dx. Yeah, and then you 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 want to, uh, yeah, that's right. All right, thank you. Okay. Sir? Yes. Can you go over to the previous slide? Yeah. But it's about a g of f of x, not to, uh, u would be two x uh, cos of two x plus one. Uh, okay, so so the third substitution would be to say let u equal two x plus one, right? And then this would be sine of u cos of u uh, du over two, right? So it now, could have been. A sine squared of 2x plus 1, right? Yeah. Then we can multiply it with 1 over yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yes, yes. All right. you, okay. you, you've seen the answer, I think, even without doing a substitution. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of guessed it. Yeah, yeah. That works too. Okay. Um, I is the integral of dx over ax plus b squared. What do you think? U equals to ax plus b. Right. U equals ax plus b. Then you've got the integral of u to the minus 2. And then du equals adx. Right? So um, dx is, would be replaced by 1 over a du. 
then you could do this one. Okay. Very good. Uh, sir, can yeah. you uh, explain a uh, example seven in more detail? I did not get this part. Okay. Like how? What do we need to do here? Okay. If I let u equal a x plus b, right? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, this is one over u squared, or u to the minus two. The integrand yes. becomes one, uh, u to the minus 2, right? Yes. Now, what's du? du equals a dx. So dx is replaced by 1 over a du. OK. OK? Mm -hmm. OK, got so, Sir, so it would be uh, 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 integ integration of du over a into u squared, right? Yeah. OK. How about this one? I've got AX, uh, the integral of X to the P times AX to the five plus B to the 237th power DX. So I say you have to do this integral, but to make life easier for you, I'm going to let you choose what value of P, what the value of P is, okay? What value of p would you choose? Four. Four. Two. Oh. Oh. Okay. Why? Uh, no. Four. Yeah. Why? Well, why would you do that? Because the derivative of ax power five. Right. So I. That way you would be able to use substitution. You could let u equal ax to the five plus b, and then du is four a x to the 4, right? So if I've got an x to the 4 dx outside of the brackets there, then I'll be able to use substitution, right? So that's why you would want p to be equal to 4. Okay. All right. Now, there's another one. Integral sine of x plus 12 to the 7 f of x dx. Okay. Now, if, if I make f of x equal to zero, then that would be easy, right? I know that the integral of zero dx is equal to c. But let's say I'm not going to allow you to set f of x equal to zero. I want a non-trivial function. So what would you, what would be the best function that you can think of that f of x would be so I said this would be really easy to do. Cos of x. Even easier than that. Cos of x power 6. OK. Well, all right. So there might be several ones, but you're right. F of, if I let f of x equal cos of x, then I've got sine of x plus 12 to the 7 times cos of x dx, which is the derivative of sine of x plus 12, right? So that, that would make the integral really easy to do. That would just be integral of, of u to the 7 dx, and you know how to do that, right? Uh, always remember, you're always going to have a plus c in your answers, right? A second thing to remember is that... Um, if you do a substitution like this and you write things in terms of u, your final answer has to be in terms of x. Okay? So remember these two points, okay? Sir, what if we just choose f of x as 1 over sine of x plus 12 to the power 7? Then it would just be the integral of 1. Yeah, yeah, but that's, yeah, okay. If you want to cheat. Cheating. All right, well, let f of x equal 0. That's the easiest. <laughs> All right. Um, here's one. Integral of 10 times 1 over 1 minus x to the 9 times 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. What am I going to let my u equal to? 
1 over 1 minus x. Right. And the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is what? 1 over 1 minus x whole square. You're right. So you've got u inside some other function, and you've got the derivative of u sitting outside. That's what you're looking for. Or if you have u sitting inside of some function, and you've got the derivative of u and some multiplicative constant sitting outside, then this type of substitution is uh, th that that might might help you. Okay. So, sir, what would be the final form of this one? Okay. So, I would I would like I would let u equal one over one minus x. Yes, so then yes. the integrand becomes ten u to the nine du. Right. So that's u to the ten plus c, and then I rewrite u in terms of x. So du is u to the 10 plus c? No. If I let u, I will let u equal 1 over 1 minus x. Or um, I think the, the, the easiest one would be. Mic off, please. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, about that. Okay. Uh, all right. So one possibility is u equals 1 over 1 minus x. The other possibility is u is equal to 1 over 1 minus x to the 10. Yes, right. sir. But if you do it by u is equals to 1 over 1 minus x, then, sir, what would be the final form uh, in terms of u? Well, this integrand then becomes 10 u to the 9 du, which is equal to u to the 10 plus c, which is equal to 1 over 1 minus x to the 10 plus c. Sir, but the integral of 1 over 1 minus x is not just 1 over 1 minus x whole square. It also contains a minus x. Uh, no, I, I think the, isn't the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x 1 over 1 minus x squared? Because again, if we consider f of g of x, where uh, the inner function is one minus x. Oh yeah, it's one. Okay. okay. All right. Um, okay. So get lots of practice. Okay. At, at, at least do these problems and the ones in the in the recitation notes. And, and, and you'll get used to it. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's it for this session. If you want to ask questions and stick around, otherwise I'll see you next week. Okay. Sir, isn't the derivative of one over one minus X minus one over one minus X square? Okay. Well, let's put up Wolfram Alpha and see. Uh, okay, d by dx of one over one minus x. Yeah, one over one minus x squared. Sorry, I might, I must be reading okay. it wrong. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other questions? Sir, when is our final going to be? Uh, well, let me see. Um, Just so it doesn't surprise us this time. Oh, it should be on your Zimbio, right? Oh. I, I pull that up in a second. Uh, sir, have you gotten around to checking the midterms yet? Uh, no. There's like 600 papers, so 
uh, let's see, final exam is the 22nd of December. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, so I'll, I'll I'll see you on Tuesday then. Have a nice weekend if that's possible under these circumstances.